Hello, my name is Toby Hill. I'm with Artos, and today this video is to go over the 904A VO thermostatic valve, and we'll discuss about the valve, installing the valve, and uh, servicing the valve, so you can get a complete overview of how this valve works. And starting off, um, we have the hot and the cold into the valve, mixed water coming out the top, going to the controls, whether that be a volume control or a diverter. If you're using volume controls, you'll need one per outlet. Those outlets being shower heads, body jets, hand showers, tub spouts, etc. And best practice, you either climb off of the top or the bottom, not both. Reason for that is that you get a different temperature off at the bottom than you do off the top. And if you're using it for a tub spout, we recommend you go off the bottom. And for a two person shower system, it is recommended to use two thermostatic valves. Okay, now we'll talk about installing the rough. As far as the install height goes, it depends if it's going to be in a tub shower application or in a shower only application. In the tub shower combinations, we typically recommend installing the valve 12 to 18 inches above the rim of the tub. If it's in a shower only application, we recommend between 36 inches and 48 inches above the floor of the shower. In a two by four wall, set the valve to the back of the space and then anchor the pipes to the framework using these anchors here that keeps it nice and secure and we have it we recommend having it at the very back um, if you don't then the trim is not going to install against the finished wall surface It'll, the valve will be too far forward and in a two by six wall however a backer can be installed at the back of the space and you can just mount the valve to the backer using these screw holes here a very important point is to ensure that the valve is level from the front to back. The reason for this is that the handle must be square against the trim plate when it's installed. Best practice is to solder the fittings first and then thread them into the valve. If this is not possible, the cartridge and the service stops must be removed to avoid damage from the heat. Remove the cartridge and flush out the pipes once the connection is complete. You can just remove the cartridge by removing the two stems and then using a wrench on here to undo it. Lastly, install the cartridge back in, reinstall the stems, and install the plaster guard. Next step is installing the trim. The valve spindles are designed to accommodate a wide tolerance of wall thicknesses to eliminate the need for spindle extensions. A finished wall surface can be between one to three inches from the front of the plaster guard. In other words, the depth of the plaster guard is the tolerance. Remove the plaster guard Then remove the outer spindle and the inner spindle. Refit just the outer spindle. Slide the trim plate on. and secure with nut. Using a marker, mark the outer spindle flush with the front face of the securing nut. Disassemble by removing the securing nut and then the trim plate.
cut the outer spindle where the mark is. Remove the outer spindle. Reassemble the inner and outer spindle. Mark the inner spindle a half inch from the front face of the outer spindle, or one inch if you're using a round handle. Cut the inner spindle at your mark. On the back of the trim plate, apply a semicircle of silicone to seal against the wall and shed water during use. Hand tighten the securing nut, then using the provided Allen wrench, tighten the set screw on the securing nut. Put the control handle on. Turn the handle to adjust the water temperature to your desired temperature. When at your desired water temperature, remove the handle. Install the temperature limiting ring. Then put the control handle back on. Check the temperature and the temperature override function to assure everything is working properly. and secure the control handle by tightening the set screw with the Allen wrench. Once you have selected your desired temperature, the thermostat can be left in that position. However, it is good practice to turn the handle to full hot for a couple of seconds, and then to full cold for a couple of seconds, and then back to the, your desired temperature while the shower is still running. This helps prevent the cartridge from building up mineral deposits. To recalibrate thermostat temperature, remove the handle, then remove the temperature limiting ring, then reapply the handle. Turn the handle to adjust the water temperature to your desired temperature. When at your desired water temperature, remove the handle. Install the temperature limiting ring. Then put the control handle back on. Check the temperature and the temperature override function to assure everything is working properly. and secure the control handle by tightening the set screw with the Allen wrench. Remove the handle. Remove the temperature stop ring. Unloosen set screw on trim plate securing nut. Remove the trim plate nut. Remove the trim plate. Using a slotted screwdriver, close the service stops by tightening clockwise. Valve is now isolated with no water running to it. Remove outer valve stem by unscrewing it. The inner valve stem just falls off. Unscrew the cartridge using an adjustable wrench or a socket. Remove the seals.
Soak the cartridge in a white vinegar for 24 hours. Reinstall the seals. Reinsert the cartridge and tighten with a wrench. Open the service stops and test the water. If it's going okay, reinstall the tray. This is just a short clip to show the function of the service stop on the Artos F904 BO. Here we have the, the screw which can be turned in to uh, cease the flow here and to actually service the stop itself I can do the, the whole assembly and you'll see that there is a, a check valve and a spring. The spring goes is located inside of the service stop and the spindle from the check valve goes into the spring and the whole assembly goes together in that way and that prevents um, water from, from this side flowing back through into that side.